What's cooking good looking? Today, we are gonna be taking a quick look at the studio. I'm gonna give you guys a rundown of all the different areas, how we set everything up, how we turn this little one car garage into the studio as it stands now. So we're gonna take you bit by bit as we're going along. Follow me. So this area here, this is like the product table. Anytime I do the unboxings and all that, if you guys have seen, we're usually shooting from this angle forward. Uh, the drums aren't here <laughs> naturally when I'm doing those unboxings. So I kind of have to reconfigure things a little bit depending on what we're shooting in here. So I'll bring in my desk from upstairs, move the drums out, and then that's what we get as the backdrop here. So whenever I'm going through the products, everything is just kind of listed here. So these are things that I've unboxed, things that need to be reviewed, or things that are gonna be part of the giveaway pool later. So if you see some things in there that you like, it could be yours very soon. As it stands now, I have the electronic drum set here. This is where I track different things when I'm doing my music recordings. Everything's hooked up here. Usually this monitor is also connected to my PC. So that's where I have pretty much just an extra screen so I can see everything that's going on with the wireless mouse and keyboard. I can interact with everything from the PC without having to constantly get up from the drums and come back and forth and back and forth. Um, little wall of guitar straps, artwork made by my friend. These big old sound panels I made myself here as well. And then up top, we've got a whole bunch of just pops, collectibles, figurines and stuff as well. Things I've gotten as gifts, things that I've seen in the store and I just needed to get <laughs> because I have a problem. But this is this corner. So as you guys come into the studio space, here on the left, I have shelving units set up as well as just a whole bunch of posters from movies, um, canvases, things that were given to me as presents, gifts from friends. So starting with the left shelf, I've got some Pokemon plushies. I found these bad boys set up just like that and a Target. So it's like somebody left them there just for me. <laughs> I had to pick them up as soon as I saw them there. I have all of the OG DS games for Pokemon. All of the original Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games I have as well. They're just not on a display yet. I still need to find a good way to kind of show those off. And then on the shelf to the right, you have all of my OG PlayStation 2 games. I've told you guys before, the Game Boy Advance was my first handheld, but the PS2 was my first actual console. That was mine and mine alone, not to share with <laughs> my uncle or my cousin or anything like that. So all these games were it. The Dragon Ball Z, all the Budokais, Budokais and Kaichis. Guitar Hero did a huge, huge number on me. It helped shape me as the musician that I am now. Literally kind of helped with basic guitar skills and rhythm reading. And of course you got Grand Theft Auto. A lot more of the retro games on display just so that they can be part of you know, the whole aesthetic, if you will. Now the centerpiece to your right when you come into the studio, this is pretty much home base. We've got the couch and we've got the wall of guitars. These are my main guitars, the ones that I'll use periodically throughout jam sessions, recordings, different versions for different styles of music. And they just kind of, you know. <laughs> If you guys have followed my music channel, you've seen that this is usually the main backdrop for those videos. It just makes a really, really cool background when you put on the lights and everything like that. It just kind of helps make everything pop a little bit more. If you guys ever come into the studio space to hang out, to play games, watch movies, this is pretty much where you'll find me. So if you guys saw my desk setup, desk upgrade video at the beginning of the year, you've seen a lot of this area. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of everything that's here. So we've got my custom PC inside that nice NZXT case. I've got all the beefed up specs from the RTX 3070 and i9-9900K, 64 gigs of RAM, all that good stuff. Um, up top you have this display shelves of the internals of the PC as well as just some Dragon Ball Z figures. I've got the Dragon Balls, Gogeta, little things like that. On the wall itself, I have mounted the two studio monitors for when I'm recording. I can hear back nice clean audio. I've got some Mandalorian art here. Shout out to my homegirl, Gabby. Check out her Instagram, I'll link it down below. And then we've got just the desk itself, the ultra wide monitor, 34 inches, 4K, 27 inch vertical. On the far left, I actually have a 3D printer that I've been kind of messing with. I haven't done a whole lot yet, but I've got some little guys here and there. I've started with a little test dog. And then I've got here 
my little Teddy Ursa. Mm -hmm. So Pokemon Go, everything's got to have a little bit of something, right? The Alex drawers themselves are set up to kind of have different uh, uses. The one on the right is full of guitar stuff. So I've got strings, picks, repair kits, cleaners, cables, everything that you would need as far as live music goes. Everything on the left side, it's a little bit more hidden and out of the way, but the top shelf is mostly uh, power, batteries, cables, anything you would need there. The second one is all the cameras, webcams, camcorders, and you get the idea, everything from there. Going this way, I've got two big pieces of canvas art that were gifted to me when I got my first uh, house rental a while back. Some Pokemon memorabilia, pegboard, backpacks, and then we move on to the music area. So here in the grand center of the room when you're facing inward from the door, we have this giant foam art Tony logo that was made by a good friend of mine a few years back. Uh, that Tony logo was also designed by another friend of mine. I really wanted it like a big print type thing for it. So my friend painted this out for me. And when he finished, the bottom left corner was just like the tiny bit of the T. So it was just kind of empty space. And he threw in just the perfect art ad lib of that little Deadpool. So it just made the whole thing fit together. He knew my aesthetic, he knew everything in that world with it. So that was perfect. I love that little guy. So on from there, of course, this is a one car garage, so it does get very hot in here. <laughs> so I installed the window unit to keep it nice and cool. In those hot summer days when we're in here, we're trying to record or play that we're not just dying. This is from Medea and it is a smart window unit so I can control it with my phone or Google, Alexa, anything like that. Down here, I have all of the guitar amps. Uh, they're on top of this little wooden stand that I built myself as well. But we've got orange guitar, the Positive Grid Spark 40, the orange bass amp, and the big boys down below, the Boss Katana 100, and that beefy Bugetta bass amp. Up to the side, I've got some more guitars in their cases. Those are the real nice ones that need to stay in their cases. And just more random Power Ranger helmet, sound equipment, all the stands and stuff kind of go off into this little corner here. Um, and that's kind of wraps up this side of it. Now, remember, this is technically a one car garage. So we've made it work as best we could with what we had, but it's still a garage. <laughs> so that corner storage has just been like chaotic and full of stuff and crock pots and random things. The little sliding hinge door doesn't even work on it. So it's just kind of collapsed in there. And right behind me, these two white doors, this is actually just the washer and dryer. Um, everything is welded in there. So when I'm recording from my PC facing towards me, this is usually what my backdrop is. It's not the most aesthetically pleasing. Um, there's a ways around that. You could always just green screen yourself out. I've seen people use like just drop downs from butcher paper, projector screen, stuff like that to kind of help give you a different thing. Usually if I turn off the lights around it and I put a nice accent color light behind me, it kind of washes this out and the white helps reflect that light. Find yourself in a similar situation where your background isn't really the best. There's always lots of options for stuff like that. And to finally start wrapping things up here, the biggest piece of this whole thing is probably the gaming setup itself. So the main centerpiece of all, the TV here, the G C10 4K OLED smart TV that can run 120 hertz. So it is a must have for the newest generation of gaming consoles. And that OLED screen just makes it ridiculously thin, like thinner than my Game Boy, thinner than a Game Boy cartridge, thinner than my phone, thin. It is insane the amount of space that this thing takes up from the wall. It's just glorious. That's the first thing my people notice when they come into the room. They just look at the side of the TV and think, where the hell is the rest of the TV? <laughs> so that thing is awesome. Watching any style 4K content on this has been an absolute joy. I'll go back and I'll rewatch things like Infinity War Endgame on this screen. It is insane how good it is. Right above the TV, 
I have my collection of all of the Marvel props that I could get my hands on from the Infinity Gauntlet, from both Infinity War and Endgame, Mjolnir, Iron Man's helmet, Cap's shield, Black Panther's mask, necklace, Doctor Strange's, and of course the newest edition, Stormbreaker, that big boy right there in the center. So if you take a look around the actual TV itself, to the left, I have all of the old handhelds in the Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and the Game Boy Advance SP. So those are guys are rolling there, hanging out with their little Game Boy family. And then to the right of it, I have all of the Nintendo DS's. From the original Fat Boy, the gray one here, to the DSi, to the 3DS themselves. So all of these, they still work. I still have the chargers, games, everything for them. Nothing's just on display to be on display. At a moment's notice, I could pick up any one of these games and start playing. So that being said, the entire setup here is consoles, both old and new. So we're gonna run you through each of the consoles that are actually in the setup, and I'm gonna show you how they're all set up together because every single one of these consoles is on right now and can be played on the TV with the flip of a button. So I'm gonna run you guys through that real quick. So starting here on the left side, we've got the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo 64, and the GameCube. So that's our little Nintendo. Everything that's powered their video and audio through the red, white, and yellow cables is hooked up to a little splitter right over here. It's a four in, one out. And all it takes is me to flip that button back and forth and it'll switch the inputs. Moving over to the right side, I have the PS2, which is the fourth one in over there using those older style cables. And then we've got the PS3. Going down to the middle, I've got the Wii, the Wii U, and the Switch. PS4 over here. And then of course the centerpiece of it all, PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Right now up on the screen, you see that the PS5 is loaded up. I can grab my controller, I can move around, hop back into God of War, and just kind of roll around a little bit. But let's say I wanna go from there back to the Xbox. A quick flip of a button, and I'm back in over here. My controller idled out, but we've got everything there. So seamless transition from PS5 to Xbox Series X, which is what you would expect from a modern TV with these modern consoles. But let's say I wanna go old school, and I wanna flip back over to the older consoles. So right down here is an HDMI switcher. This is a five in, one out switcher, and that's pretty much the brains of this entire operation here. With the little remote or with the button on it, I can tell it which input I want it to switch to, and it'll move from there. All of the retro consoles into that splitter go into a converter that'll take it into an HDMI signal, and it'll run it from there. So now that it is on input number four, I can go ahead and jump over, and we have the Super Nintendo loaded up with Super Mario World. I can flip the switch again, and now we're on Pokemon Stadium, where the audio will just destroy everything that we love. Over here on input three, I've got Spider-Man 2 loaded up on the GameCube, patiently waiting to be started. And then if I switch over to four, we've got the PS2 with Simpsons Hit and Run, again, just waiting for us to ensue chaos with Bart, Homer, and Marge. If I switch the inputs now, continuing forward, I go to three, that's gonna take us to the PlayStation 3. You'll see that nice uh, interface there. It's looking a lot cleaner than what we remember it to be. It's a little faded out now because it's been idling for a bit. Let's go ahead and switch over to the PS4, which we should find ourselves in the same scenario. It should be idled out at this point but everything is there, everything is working, connected. Now if I go over to the Wii, Wii U, and Switch, they are all in their own separate converter as well. So they're fighting for the signal right now. One of them is gonna win. But I have a separate converter button down here where what each of these guys will have their opportunity to shine and show you that they're actually on and running. So I think the Switch is gonna take the cake here first. Let's see what signal we get from these guys. So we have the Wii, 
in that big old nostalgia menu. You got the me, the news channel. We Sports Resort is loaded in there, ready to rock and roll and go play some tennis with your homies. We should have the Wii U next. So we've got Wii Plaza. My me is somewhere there in all of that madness. And then one more switch and it is the switch. So from there, it's pretty much whichever one is on will run power to the switch. This is the first time I've had every single console on at the same time. So they were all kind of fighting for <laughs> priority, but with the buttons, you can just control it right there. Uh, but usually this switcher is really good about detecting when the signal is coming in and where it's coming from. So as long as I power one of these on, it'll go to where it needs to. So for now, we'll take it back to the newer consoles. We don't have to worry about fighting for signal. The PS5 and the Series X are both connected straight to the TV. They're not part of that switcher. Now I could take all of this one step further. Every single one of these consoles is connected to the TV via one last HDMI splitter. I can take one extra HDMI and I can run it to my PC and stream any single one of these consoles, whether they're old or new, and stream it on Twitch, Facebook, anything like that. So that's always been my main goal is to have not just these systems sitting here collecting dust, but to make sure that each and every one of them is playable and recordable slash streamable. So that's been a huge project kind of working through the last couple of years, collecting the systems, getting everything that I need to get them to work. But it's been a lot of fun setting it up. And every time I move houses or studios, it's just another project to try and find the best way to get them to work all together. And I think we found a good balance here with how they're set up now. All right, guys, that's gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here for today. Thank you so much for following along here, everything in the studio. It's been a pleasure showing it off. Let me know if you guys have any questions about anything that you saw here in the setup. If you want a little bit more elaboration of something, if you saw something in the corner that maybe caught your eye that I didn't talk about, let me know down in the comments. Remember to reach out to me either here on YouTube or via my Instagram, the True Zeramar, and I'll gladly get back to you guys with whatever we can. This studio space has been awesome and I'm gonna miss it. I'm actually moving here very soon, getting my own place, my own apartment. So we're working on getting the set up in a different way there. Again, this is a one car garage and we've made it work with the best we can do, but it's taking a lot of maneuvering and moving back and forth, setting up this, trying down that to get things to work the way we need them to. So in this new studio space, we're gonna have a lot more creative freedom to just keep everything set up one very specific way where we can just set up very quick and record more content, whether it's for the gaming or the music channel. So that's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Keep an ear out for when that video is dropping and you guys will see a whole lot more cool stuff very soon. Thank you guys very much for everything. Appreciate you. And until next time, we'll see ya.